Alex and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk about the things that I've been making each month. I have some knitting and some sewing to show you so I hope you're all well and that you've all got a cup of tea or coffee and are ready to chat making. Um, I'll start by telling you about what I'm wearing. If you've been watching for a little while you'll recognise this is my pheasant pullover by Amy Christophers and I was really close to finishing it when I was recording last time so um, yeah it's done and I'm really really pleased. I'll stand up so you can see it's a really nice sweater. It's in um, what was it called? Jameson's and Smith. It's their jumper weight which is a really really lovely yarn. I think you can probably see if I come a little bit closer it's like um, got lots of subtle shifts in the colour. It's not like a flat brown the background. It's got a really nice um, mix of different shades in there and it's got this beautiful yoke coming a little bit closer you can see this sort of lovely colour work design and yeah I'm just so pleased with how it turned out I really enjoyed this yarn it's quite a light fingering weight so um, it did take a lot of time I think on the body stitches I had about 300 or so stitches so it was quite slow going doing that many stitches in the round but it was quite pleasant I quite enjoyed like just very meditative time to sort of keep going round and round and round just doing stock in it. It was quite nice, but it did seem like it was really slow growing at one point. But the yoke fit that flew off the needles because it was one of those things where you just want to do one more row, one more row. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a really enjoyable project and I really love how the yarn feels. I don't find it irritable or too scratchy. It's a very woolly yarn, it's a Shetland yarn. Um but I feel like if you did have any sensitivity, if you maybe wore like a long sleeve t-shirt under, it'd be okay. But obviously everybody has different tolerances, so I can't really speak to that. But for me personally, I find it really comfortable to wear. And I think in the light fingering, it's actually much more wearable than some of my other jumpers that I've made that are in sort of um, thicker, more worsted weights. So like I feel like this has a lovely drape and it feels nice to wear against the skin it's got lots of movement and yeah I would definitely use this yarn again in fact I've been already thinking about what I want to do next and have my eye on I think it's the new leaf it's a Jennifer Steingast pattern and she's got quite a few so I looked a lot but I think it was the new leaf one that I was looking at and they actually do it in um it comes in a short sleeve version which I thought would be really nice in this sort of fingering weight yarn but um, I, I won't give you all the colourway names for these at the moment because they're all numbers. So if you are interested in knitting this, I'll put a link below. I always do some show notes every time I put a video up. So in the show notes, it will have a list of all the different colours I use because they just come with numbers. So I can't remember all the numbers off the top of my head. But um, yeah, there'll be a link to the pattern and everything there. If you want to get the show notes to your email, I send out an email every time one of these videos goes live, which lots of people like to receive. So there'll be a link to that below as well. So however you'd like to get it, you can either get the show notes over on my blog, or if you want to sign up, um, yeah, every time a video goes up, I send out a list of everything I chat about with all the patterns and the yarns and fabrics linked there. So if that's something you're interested in, have a little look in the description box and it'll be there. So that's probably the most exciting thing that I've been working on, but um, I will show you the other bits that I've got. Uh, I've got another pair of socks, which I don't think I was even working on when I spoke to you last, but these are um, just a plain pair of vanilla socks and it's in Dusty Dimples, which I'll come a little bit closer so you can see. It's like a really nice neutral base with some little speckles. This is my favourite kind of speckled, colourful yarn. I love this kind of thing where it's very neutral, but it's just got lots of soft blips of colour. And yeah, this was just the exact project that I wanted to have on the needles. Once I'd finished my sweater, I was looking for something, like a bit of a quick win, but also just something that I didn't really need to think about. I always do the same for all of my sort of straight socks like this. I do them toe up and I have it all memorised. I always do a Turkish cast on for the toe and I do a knit front back increase every other row on the toes and I knit sort of, I can't remember, about 50 stitches or so. I know that I stop about two inches before the heel and I do a fish lips kiss heel and I do a two by two ribbed cuff and the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off so I have all that kind of stored up in my head and these are really nice simple projects and it's just nice when you've got a really pretty yarn it's so enjoyable and I love this kind of thing when you see the little speckles 
pop up in your yarn. So that's another finished object. I've got two finished objects today. That's not like me, but it's really nice to have those ready. And they've blocked beautifully, actually. I'll quickly take it off the sock blocker so you can see. I think the colourway was called Fillmore. But yeah, it's like really nice sock blend. I think it's just called her Dusty Sock. But yeah, I love this. And I actually, I picked this yarn up in person. This was at the last yarn festival I was able to go to in um, Farnham. What's that called? Unravel. I think it was Unravel. Um, yeah, and I picked this up on her booth. So yeah, really love those. I have another pair of socks that you have seen on the needles, but I don't think they'll look very different. I've got them in my um, one of my little spring bees bags, which are available in my shop. And have a little DPN cozy which is really sweet I love these with the bees and as I say I've shown you these before but I don't think oh, I'll drop that I don't think I've done I've maybe done one repeat I haven't done very much more of these but I'll give you a peek anyway you can see it's got a lovely sort of I think maybe you'd call it like a mock cable design it's just appearing there. It's um, the Fairy Maiden Socks by This Handmade Life. And I'm using the Woolly Mammoth Natural Sock Base. So this is like a naturally dyed um, nylon free sock base, which is really nice. It's knitting up beautifully actually. And I love Emma's soft colourways. This lovely soft dusty pink is just beautiful. And yeah, so that's the only other um, sock project that I've got at the moment. So. Have, I usually like to have a vanilla pair on the needles, um, so I probably will cast on something else as well. But this is nice when you want something that has a little bit of thought needed, but not too much. It's kind of like, once I get into the pattern, I don't need to pay too much attention. It's it's nice. It's um, a yeah, really nice, easy, memorable pattern, that. And... Yeah, I think I still have some of these sock sets in the shop. I have exciting news about the shop, actually. Here in the UK, the government have been encouraging people to go back to work this week if you can't work from home, which means the supplier that I get all my organic uh, fabrics from, they have been closed for the whole duration of the lockdown. In fact, I think they actually closed um, a little bit before it was sort of officially put into lockdown, but they have reopened this week and have placed an order. It hasn't dispatched yet, so I think it's been, I think I maybe ordered on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so it's been a few days now, but hopefully next week they'll dispatch that and I'll be able to get printing again because lots of you have contacted me about some of the larger things like my big sweater sacks and the knitting needle cases that I do. Um, and yeah, I just really, really need to print some more fabrics. So hopefully that will be coming soon and maybe towards the end of the month we'll have a shop update with some of those bigger pieces. But I've still got some of the smaller items like I've got my sock sacks and DPN cozies and I've got my next project actually is in one of my bags as well. I've got quite a few of the drawstrings left in different prints. Um, so yeah, so there's still quite a few things, especially like these are my most popular bag size that I have in the shop and they're still there. So I've managed to keep those in stock um, using the supplies that I've got. But yeah, so your detour to have a bit of shop chat. <laughs> but so inside this bag, I'll show you what's inside because that's probably more what you're interested in and it doesn't look like much to start with this is actually going to be a sweater so it's the deep moss pot which is a um what's her what's the designer's name it's a fiber company pattern and it's by carrie helene rain i think that's how you say her name and this is the fiber co law and oh i'm in love with this yarn i don't think it'll pick up just how beautiful all the shifts in colour are with this. It's a lovely sort of sea glassy green but it's like a very, it's got a very neutral undertone. It's got sort of greys going through it and sort of like warm natural shades and it's beautiful. I'm really enjoying this for, it's like a woolly wool. It's 100% um, it's a Romney lamb's wool. So it's very woolly, but it's this colour just has like a real spring feel and I think it's going to be really nice. So I'll give you, I don't know how best to show this. So 
I'll put it upside down. So obviously this is the neck and I'll try and hold it out in a fan so you kind of see what it'll look like with the yoke. You can see I've already in have increased but it's just not very obvious where it's on the needles. But it starts with this ribbing that goes throughout the whole yoke. And you can see I've just started this more decorative section. So on the neck it will kind of have this smaller rib and it will fan out as it increases. And it has just yes, this beautiful textured yoke. And this is sort of like a twisted rib, so it really, really pops as well. And the law's great for the stitch definition as well. Fiberco law is just, oh, it's really, really great sweater yarn. I think it's like, yeah, really, really good. I enjoy this. Again, like I was saying with the Jameson Smith, I don't find this particularly irritating to my skin, although I maybe have a higher tolerance than other people. So maybe just get yourself like a mini skin if you want to just try it out and knit up a swatch, see what you think. But I think this is a really, really good sweater yarn. It's a great all rounder. It blocks beautifully. I've got um, some other pieces that I've worked in with this. But yeah, it doesn't um, look like much just yet. And it's a bit funny because I've got it on this tiny needle. So it almost looks like a baby sweater that I'm working from the bottom up. But it's not, I assure you. It's a nice wide neck um, textured yoke sweater, which I'm enjoying. So that's what I cast on um, as my next sweater project. So I'm enjoying having that on the needles. And I think that might be everything I've got for knitting this week. Um... Yeah, I think that's everything for knitting. I've got a few sewing bits. I showed you the other week I'd done a linden sweatshirt and I've made another one because I think at this time, while we're all spending so much time at home, you can never have enough comfy clothes. And this is in a lovely sage green. It's kind of hard to show on the camera, but because it's just quite a simple sweatshirt, but I love the Grainline Studio patterns. I think they're really easy to follow, and this sews up so fast. If you're new to using jersey fabrics, this is probably actually a really good pattern to start with because the sweatshirt fabric has more body than a very lightweight jersey, so it's not going to be slinking around all over the place. It's not too drapey or flowy. It kind of stays where you put it. So that's one plus for doing like a sweatshirt but also it has a raglan seam so the sleeves are really easy to sew you haven't got to do like a sleeve hole or anything you you basically you start by it with the front and you attach these two seams and then you attach the back of the sleeve seams to the back center piece and once you've done that it's just a case of adding your cuffs which I've done my cuffs and hems just in the same fabric you could use a ribbing but I quite like using the same fabric as the sweatshirt and I did the same with the um, the same modification as the last sweater I made um, by making the hem the same width as the body it doesn't pull in at all so I don't know if you can see if I hold that up it's just very straight it doesn't kind of pull in whereas on a traditional sweatshirt it kind of usually you'd um, have a slightly smaller waistband and it kind of just pulls in and gives it a slightly bad look but I like the very straight look of the hem so as I was saying about this being a great project if you're new to jerseys I'll just mention that I've surged or overlocked all my seams using the overlocker but if you don't have um, an overlocker you can sew jerseys on a normal machine how I do mine is um, I use the walking foot which is something that you use if you were quilting usually so basically it has something in it that helps pull the fabric I think it maybe has a, another set of feed dogs so basically it's it allows you to have thicker fabric like you would if you were having a quilt with a sort of batting in the middle and it sort of pulls everything through at the same tension um, and that's really really helpful if you're sewing jersey so I always use my walking foot and if you want to do I don't have it on this one but sometimes you can have like a especially if you're doing a t-shirt you see on a store-bought t-shirt you might have like the two um, rows of stitching around like the collar and on the hem if you're hemming you'd quite often have that and you can use um, a twin needle in a regular machine as well which gives a really professional finish so there's ways that you can use a regular sewing machine if you want to give jersey a try you don't have to overlock all your seams so yeah you can have a go at that so I've done my linden sweatshirt and I've actually got enough 
fabric left over to do a pair of matching Hudson pants. That's a true bias pattern I've shown before. So I'll have a nice um, matching set in this sage green. But yeah, this was a great project to work on. As I say, it was super quick to sew, very like gratifying. Once you've done a pattern, that's what I like about having things that I know fit really well. So I can just pull out the pattern, cut the fabric, and it probably, I don't know, I wasn't timing myself, but it probably did just take an hour or something to sew. So that was one piece. And the next one, I've got another really simple make, which is another very beginner friendly pattern. And it's a free pattern. I'll try and show you the length. So can you see it kind of is like a midi length on me, but it's just a really floaty, um, midi length skirt and I used the Megan Nielsen, she has a tutorial that I found on Pinterest which is just for a simple elasticated waist skirt and this just used a metre of fabric, the only seam is in the back, you probably can't see that but I'll show you on the inside where I've overlocked, the only seam is through the back and you fold over the waistband, you feed in some elastic and I've added very wonkly, um, I don't know if you can see that, can you see it's got a little made by me label, I've got a few of these and um, they're from the Fabric Fox and um, she had a stand at Blogtacular probably like two years ago, could have even been three, I think maybe it was two years ago, I can't remember, but um, yeah she had a stand with some fabrics and I bought these labels and I don't know why I've been hoarding them, I never put them in my things and this time I thought no I'm going to add a label, especially with something like this I think it's quite nice to just really quickly see where the back is, but um, yeah I really like that, I, I'm not sure I mentioned the fabric, it's a Lady McElroy, um, it's a crepe, a viscose crepe, so it's got nice drape, it doesn't crease too easily and yeah I'm loving the leopard print. I've got, um, I thought I'd show you actually, I've mentioned before about I always do like a mood board each season and you can see I've done my mood board for spring, summer and I'm not sure if you can tell but it's got a few like leopard print um, sort of highlights, so there's a leopard print skirt and I've got like some shoes and it's actually for the, um, for the hair piece I've got some extra fabrics, I'm thinking of doing a scrunchie with that but yeah so I think you could probably see where I was, but I'll bring it a little bit closer and I'll put in the show notes a little screenshot of my mood board. But yeah, so that was one of the reasons why I did the skirt. That was kind of like I wanted to have a nice summery skirt, but also it's comfortable enough to wear at home because at the moment, obviously, we're not really going out. But it has been, we've been really lucky here in the UK. We've had some lovely weather lately and it's been really warm so it's kind of nice thing that you can just wear with like a t-shirt and it's really really comfortable but still quite cool and we've been at home so long now that I'm kind of over wearing like loungewear all the time it is quite nice to sometimes put on something different especially yeah now the weather's getting hotter I feel like I'm sitting out on the balcony a little bit more and it's nice to wear something like a skirt I've got actually, next thing, I saw Helen's Closet has a really nice pair of trousers that are kind of similar to that style that I thought would be really nice in a linen. So I've got a few ideas. Some of these pieces I already have, like I've got a white linen shirt and this My Million Reasons bag that you show me, saw me show last week. And I've got my, I um, can't remember who made the pattern. I think it might be... I can't remember, but I have some shorts that I'd sewn, some white shorts that I sewed last year in white linen as well. So yeah, I've got a few nice things coming together, but that was like my first piece that was an inspired sew for my spring summer wardrobe. I'm pleased with how that came out with. So yeah, if you, I know quite a lot of people that watch this are knitters and you've made comments before about wanting to try sewing because you've been inspired by some of the things I've shown. So this week, you've got two things that you could really, this would be a great beginner sewing project and yeah, I think that would be good. And if you want to have a go at doing Jersey, the Linden sweatshirt by Grainland Studios would be another good one. So I think that's everything. I feel like I've whizzed through all the bits that I had to chat about. I think because I'm excited to have some new things to show you. And yeah, I hope you're doing really well. I know it's a strange time, but it's lovely to catch up with other makers. I've been really enjoying watching some of my favourite knitters and sewers on YouTube. So I hope you've enjoyed watching these and 
tell me in the comments what are you working on are you sitting there with a project right now I'd love to know if you have got a project to keep me company while you're watching and yeah as I said before all the details for everything will be in the show notes where I'll put a link below this video and if you want to have a look at the shop and um, keep updated if there's anything that you want that's not available in the shop um, as I said I will be hopefully printing some fabric soon if I get some get a delivery so let me know what it is you're waiting for and yeah and then we can chat because when it is available I can drop you an email in fact on all the product pages it does have a little bit where you can enter your email if something's out of stock so you can always just pop your email in there and yeah you'll get a notification when something's added to the shop that you've been waiting for but I will stop um, gabbering on and I'll sign off and hope you have a lovely day and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.